Hey YouTube, welcome back. We had a great question pop up in chat and it's something that you might not know about if you're a brand new Last E5 player. And the question is, what is Weaver's Will? Hopefully you've already known what uh, legendary potential is. You know what unique items are. They have LP, legendary potential. You can kind of add new affixes onto your unique items and they become legendary items. That's awesome. However, in 091, there's an addition of a new mechanic into Last Epoch. And if you're just now coming back into Last Epoch, you might not know what it is. And it looks a little bit weird. So we're going to go over a post real quick so you know what's here. This will be linked in the description as well if you want to read it. And we're going to talk about some of the items that are available in, uh, in Last Epoch that have Weaver's Will on them. And with the help of Twitch chat, we're going to talk about the items that we've been enjoying, the kind of use cases for, uh, for these various items, and what kinds of affixes you want, what kind of affixes you might not want when you throw these on the ground and just disregard them. Maybe any builds that are enabled by these particular Weaver's Will unique items. And last but not least, uh, some of the mechanics about how they gain Weaver's Will and uh, what the probabilities are for adding affixes or getting uh, a different aff or getting new tiers to an affix. All right. So with that said, let's look at the Weaver's Will post real quick. So this was just added. It's it's a new way of getting legendary potential onto your item, kind of. So with an LP item, you have a unique, it's got one LP, and then you smack it together with an exalted item, and you get one random affix onto your item, and then it becomes a legendary item. So a Weaver's Will item, it's kind of like that. It's got a base unique item with the base stats on it, and it's going to gain affixes but you don't get to control which affixes are gained. You're going to kill monsters randomly. It's going to say your item, you're like your weaver item leveled up. And then uh, depending on how much weaver's will your item has, that's how many times it will level up. If it has five weaver's will, for example, with the item that you see on the screen here, it will level up once and then it ticks down to four. It'll level up a second time and it ticks down to three, for example. If it ticks the same affix five times in a row, all of a sudden, you're going to have a tier 5 affix. If it ticks different affixes each single time, it'll have like a, like a tier 1, a tier 1, a tier 1, and a tier 2. Because that is 5 all added together. So uh, that is what those numbers mean. When we talk about... Oh, man, it's, it's kind of hard to, to <laughs> explain this the perfect way. When we talk about the first affix on your item being a good affix or a bad affix... It, it depends on, or I guess it's, it, it matters what the first affix is on your item because the very first affix that appears on your Weaver's item is very likely going to be tier five or tier six or even tier seven. So if you really want a Weaver shield that has block chance on it, if the first modifier that appears is block chance, you're very excited because when it rolls, to either or when when uh when the weaver upgrades your item when the weaver's will ticks down it has a 75 percent chance to upgrade the tier of the modifier that already exists on the item by one and a 25 percent chance to add a new affix altogether so the first affix that appears 75 percent chance that it's going to go up a tier 75 percent chance that it's going to go up a tier and then once it has two affixes on it then it's a 75% chance that it's going to go up a tier, but it's going to be split between the two affixes that are already there. Hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say. What that means is if you have a five Weaver's Will shield, like the one on the screen here, if the very first affix that you get is chance to shock attackers, you can basically just toss this item on the ground and you don't really care. If your Weaver's Will shield has 25 Weaver's Will, even if it hits a bad first affix, you're probably okay with that because it's got 25 Weaver's Will. That's a ton of Weaver's Will. I think the highest I've seen is like 19. And then, of course, a tier, if it had 28 Weaver's Will, which is technically possible, that would mean that all of your affixes that you hit are guaranteed to be tier 7 by the time you level this thing up. So that's a brief explanation of the 7525. And what it means for like the first affix to be garbage and maybe you just toss it on the ground or if the first affix is good and you're pretty happy about that um the other thing that you ought to know is in case this matters to you why isn't my item leveling up faster what can i do to make it level up faster 
it has to do with killing monsters. So you can't just stand around. Weird. Uh, apparently, according to information that I was just fed a moment ago, it has a very, very low chance to gain a level or to do the Weaver's Will thing on kill with a 15 second cooldown. So you want to be killing monsters every 15 seconds. You want to be killing a whole bunch of monsters. Technically, what I've done when I have like a whole inventory full of Weaver's Will shields that I want to level up, you could just walk into the arena and waste some time, go hang out there, put Netflix or put on a stream in the, uh, in the second monitor, kill a bunch of monsters, and your items will level up with a 15 second cooldown. It's a pretty good way of blasting a whole bunch of these if you want to do them all at the same time, for example. So let's, uh, let's keep scrolling down here real quick. They got some examples of how these things work. Uh, do we care about this? New unique items? We don't care about that. Okay, let's close this out. So we talked about the... We talked about the the 25-75. 75% chance to add a tier to an existing modifier. Or 25% chance to add a new modifier. Remember, there can only be four modifiers max. What items are there? And do we care about the uh the base items themselves are these items only good if they get additional stats on them or are the base items themselves kind of interesting i think there's one item that really stands out as particularly interesting by itself and depending on what kinds of builds you like playing there might be some other ones as well so the boots are something that come up on stream very often because we've been playing a lot of ward based builds especially with the introduction of rune master and why ward? Well, these boots, they say chance to gain haste for three seconds when an enemy dies. And whenever you gain haste or refresh its duration, you gain a chunk of ward. Up to 35 ward. And that's kind of interesting. You can actually use this as a way to fuel ward into your build. If you have some ward retention, you could even keep that ward. But this, along with maybe gloves that give you a chance to gain haste on hit, maybe a quicksilver ring, a unique ring that has a chance to give you a haste on hit, or maybe even a skill that has a chance to give you a haste on hit. If you combine a whole bunch of small hits with a whole bunch of chance to gain haste on hit, this is a fuel for, um, or the, sorry, this is an engine for giving ward into your build. And there's some kind of interesting stuff that you can do with this. Most notably, just to get your juices flowing, um, you can use spark charges. Spark charges tend to be in builds with lots and lots of small hits, and then you can get haste a whole bunch and turn that into ward with these boots. So that's kind of interesting. Cradle of the Erased is a uh, unique shield that kind of made a splash with people pushing into the arena. I have a shield here that I'm disappointed with. It only has tier 6 block chance, but you'll see that if I put this onto my Sentinel build here, I quickly go over... Um, I should. Should be 100% block chance, right? Oh, with my, with my sigils up. One, two, three, four, like this. Yeah, so now we're at like 106, 109 block chance. And that's pretty cool. Like, you just you put this item on, you have a whole bunch of resistance, and that, that uh, resistance fuels your block effect as well. And it's a very interesting shield, as long as you have tier 6 or maybe even tier 7 block chance on it. It's very usable. Some other items here. Uh, again, been playing a lot of Runemaster builds, so I've been really happy with using Swaddling of the Erased. Notably, if you get... Tier 7 attack speed or cast speed onto these unique gloves here. You'll see that they already have attack and cast speed. So it's kind of having like double attack and cast speed on your gloves. So tier 6 or tier 7 attack and cast speed. Awesome. Getting this with any kind of attribute is great for an attribute stacking build. Intelligence is obviously the best attribute to be stacking right now because it has so much support in Rune Master and in the mage classes. But yeah, getting tier 7 intelligence to go along with the plus to all attributes affix that's already on these gloves is a great way of juicing more sorry more intelligence or attributes into your build especially if you're trying to hit a threshold for something like a red ring of atlaria the unique ring so attributes awesome hybrid health boring but you know it's still good bonded the erased is a very weird ring you could just use this ring for the fact that it has percent health percent men on it the only other unique ring in the game that has percent health on it would be the uh, the minion critivoid ring, which I do not know the name of. Can I even pull that up? Does it matter if I can pull it up? Come on, give me three seconds. One, two, three. Oh, I found it. Hey, <laughs> look at that. Ribbons of Blood is the other ring in the game that has percent increased health on it. 
And you could just use this and be happy enough that it happens to have health and it makes your character tankier. However, there's another content creator. He is my co-host on the podcast. So Dread put together a build with a... God, was it self-cast? It might have been self-cast. I think it was self-cast smite with a twisted heart or something. There were some weird mechanics to that build. But he was making use of the flavor text. The one ward gained on hit per 10 missing mana if your current health or current ward is lower than your missing health. So there's technically one enormous brain build out there that makes use of Font of the Erased. And that's really cool. But for the most part, you're using this because of the health. You might be using this because of the mana spent in his ward. It's got some good um, good support in Mage these days if you want to do something with that. But then I would call the bottom part flavor text, but there's technically support out there. So those are some of the items. Uh, we talked about the shield, boots, glove. Yeah, and then the last one here, there's a handful of relics. There's a handful of relics, one for each class, that have been introduced as well. So I don't think there's, like, build-defining stuff you can do with them. Some of them are better than other ones. The Gambit of an Erased Rogue for your rogues has, like, a 1 in 6 chance to have some damage reduction. And, like, that's kind of cute. Um, it's like rolling a dice, right? The So each of them have, like, a relevant defensive stat, you know, dodge rating or endurance. They have plus 1 to all of your skills which is neat because these relics tend to roll class modifiers on them. And class modifiers mean they tend not to roll things like crit multi or spell crit, but they tend to, with a higher chance, roll things like plus levels to skills. So what you might have is a Weaver's Will item. Whether you want it or not, that has plus four to disintegrate and then it also has that plus one to mage skills. So this item happens to give you plus five levels to a particular skill. If you're playing Disintegrate, maybe this is the kind of item that you'd want to incorporate into your build. So that's kind of interesting. Um, trying to use these to get five levels to one skill, because that's more than four. And four is normally as much as you can get. Um, for the Weaver's Will Relics, there's one, I guess... The, the Sentinel one's interesting because it gives you damage, or armor mitigation also applies to damage over time. It's similar to the new experimental affix that you can get on your gloves. The other one that I would want to call out here would be the, uh, this, where is it? I think I have one. It's the Weaver's Relic for Primalist, which I do have. I think this one's quite good. It's less damage over time taken from slowed enemies. Damage over time, or sorry, mitigation against damage over time is pretty hard to get. So this is a relevant defensive modifier. And then the chance on hit to grant your minions aspect of the spider. Aspect of the spider is 15% more damage against slowed enemies. And a chance to, and a, yeah, 100% chance to slow on hit. So this, the fact that this gives a more multiplier to your minions, which they otherwise don't have, is to me the most interesting of the, um, of the Weaver's Will Relics. So that's like an honorable mention right there. I think that about covers it for the uh, for the Weaver's Will items. There's not too much more to do than that. If you get one, you just kind of slap it on. And if the first modifier is good, you keep it. If the first modifier is bad, you just kind of toss it on the ground and move on with your life. But it is a cool, uh, cool system in the game. And I honestly hope that they add more stuff in the game like it. Because it is fun to pick these things up and wonder how good they can really be once you flesh them out. Cool. I think that's about it. If there's anything I missed, leave it in the comment section. I'll try to address it because I read these comments very often, but hopefully we did a good job of explaining what Weaver's Will is and how it interacts with your game plan.